game last night. I didn't know I had been introduced. So thank you, everybody. This is, um, it's great to have all of you here. We're truly excited about this. You know, from the beginning, we've always said we want to give our players and coaches uh, the best opportunity to win. Uh, I know a lot of you have, have been on our 767 plane and we want to have the nicest way for our team to travel with all the travel they have to do and the back-to-backs which we don't like whatsoever. So uh, any edge that we can get, it's, uh, you can see the space, it's going to be brand new, state-of-the-art. Uh, just having dual courts, having the outdoor uh, practice facility, the unbelievable weight room, and uh, even a, a guest locker room. But, but to, to be able to have the coaches next to the film guys and, and uh, you know, our draft room and have everybody working so close together and not being on three different floors is uh, so unbelievable. To have the, the, all the state of a port, uh, saunas and, and, and uh, different treatments and water treatments that you can get today, uh, the strength and conditioning, just, just all the stuff that she just went over with you. And um, we're, just, we're just truly excited about it. Uh, our players will be excited about it. This is a great recruiting tool for, for free agents to have a facility like that. A lot of teams go out and they're, they, they put them in pieces of land that are not close to where everybody lives because it's the best thing to do economically to have this right here in the middle of town with only probably 10 minutes away from everybody means a lot. And it'll, these, it'll get these players here a lot even when they don't have real practices. So uh, it's great that it's gonna be the Memorial Herman, Houston basketball practice, Houston Rockets basketball facility, not University of Houston. You know, I, I just did one of these for U of H, you know, as y'all know last week. So. But, uh, and it was Memorial Herman also. Thank you, Memorial Herman. But we're, we're thrilled for it to be the Memorial facility, and uh, we appreciate all of you coming out today. Thank you so very much, and uh, we'll uh, all ask you questions. And Ema, you and Rafael and Patrick, y'all come up here with me, and uh, we'll answer whatever we can that you did not handle. We'll open for questions. Jonathan Fagan. Uh, gentlemen, it said that the Projected cost is 70 million. I assume that does not include the, the value of the land. What would the total investment then be when you then add in the property itself? Well, as all these properties, when you first price them and you start building them with inflation, uh, we still think it's going to be somewhere in the 70 to 75 million dollar range when you put in the land at 100 dollars a foot, maybe 80 million with the land. Uh, if you that little part over there is still part of Landry's. If you just took this box, which you wouldn't, uh, gosh, if you did it the way you want us to do it, you know, it could be you know, a $90 million facility because this piece of land is worth $25 million. So. Any other questions? Do you guys envision spending majority of the time here and really just going over to Toyota Center for the games, or how do you kind of envision how this will play out? Well, the way it's done with other teams is this is where they will be. This is really the, the Toyota Center really becomes a place to uh, play a game. But, Coach, I'll let you or the film answer that. That's kind of the answer to this. Yeah, that's, that's the norm for the most part. I would say 90% of your time is spent here. So daily trips to the arena would be really 41 times a year just for the games only. So have everything you need here, one-stop shop. It's hard to have two offices, and so, you know, Coach sure isn't going to keep things at both offices, and Rafael sure isn't going to keep things at both offices. Uh, they're going to have stated in the art offices here that are brand new, and uh, I think where his office is now will probably just be like a green room to him, where he shows up before and after the game and, uh, and then meets you guys, and then he'll head back over here to figure out what the hell went wrong that night. <laughs> Right. Right. Michael, Michael Mostly right. Hey, gentlemen, um, over here. Right here. Um, I know this has always been a goal of yours since buying the team. I'm curious, when did you think this was a reality that you could make happen? When did you think that was viable? 
Well, we kept looking for pieces of land where you can build a 70,000, you know, foot building, but at the same time, uh, you know, have room for the parking, the outside training area, and, and uh, we just realized, gosh, uh, to, to why not be right here in Houston where it makes it really convenient for our players. We already have a hella stop here if we want to bring in a free agent. Whatever, we only when you're supposed to bring in free agents, of course. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're able to make a great impression. And uh, like I said, most, most teams don't have a facility of this size that's in the middle of the city. And I think, once again, uh, it gives us an edge that other teams don't have. And you know, we all know you're just looking for that little bit of an edge. We need an edge. That's why we have this general manager and this coach. We think they give us a little bit of an edge. Vanessa? Anybody can answer this. How excited are the players to have this new state-of-the-art facility? I, well, they'll love it. They haven't seen it. I don't think it's coach anybody been out there. Uh, they haven't seen it, but, but just to see their lounge area and their, their design area, you know, I want to say y'all have a nicer media room, but we just fixed up your media room over at the but, but uh, you're, you're going to have a nice space over here. Uh, of, of course, you don't conduct business here like you will there, but, but uh, is the media room even open during the day when, when y'all have a practice, when the media comes? Do they use that media room? They'll use it. But we don't have it all set up for a practice, do we? No. No, we do not. Okay. You can't get an ice cream cone during the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Brian Fairfield. Uh, this question is for Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone, how important is it to be able to have everything in one facility, that, like almost like a one-stop shop that you have in your, your scouts, your video uh, people, the players, the coach, everybody within reach of you? Yeah, like, like Tillman said, it's really, um, it just gives us a bit of an edge. You know, obviously we've, we've worked as capably as we could in the current setup and it's fine, you do fine, but having everybody completely and totally integrated is is an obvious and 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 huge advantage and so we're really looking forward to that to that time yeah, something that we have that i don't know of another practice facility is is to even have a visitor's locker room do you know what that coach have you ever seen that but to, to even have a visitor's locker room where they have a their own entrance and they have a pathway just to get to the court of course we would have security here uh always but uh being that like 26 of the teams staying at the hotel, at my hotel, the Post Oak, that it gives them the ability, or if we want to bring in another team, or whatever it is, just to, to have guys to, that practice with our guys, that we don't want them in our locker room. Uh, once again, it just we try to think of everything to give our team the opportunity to be a better team, so. This question is for uh, Coach Udoka. From a recruitment standpoint, was this a part of Tilden and Fertitta family recruiting you to come take this position? And how impactful do you think this truly will be for free agents, guys, players, and agents talking around the league? Yeah, I mean, it was something I knew was in the works. Uh, obviously, we'd be at the arena for one more year, and then this would be up next summer. And so, yes, yeah, a huge advantage. And uh, not saying this is what won me over, obviously get to know everybody in the team that we have, but this is an added benefit, obviously. Um, second part of the question, sorry. Wait, round the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime you have a new facility, everybody's trying to one-up the next the next uh, team. And so, last few years, I've been to some places, Brooklyn and Philadelphia and Boston, that had newer facilities, and you can see the upgrades every year. And so, everybody's trying to steal little ideas and upgrade and improve, and people talk about it. So, it's a huge advantage. And, Kind of takes it takes away the monotonous day to day of being at the arena, being in one place. It's like a home away from home, and you go down there for games. But guys are in this living space, so it's a, a huge advantage, and our guys are excited to be here today. Got one more for Tillman, if possible, um, right over here. Is it satisfying at all for you to be building this facility with a team that is seemingly on the rise in the Western Conference after a difficult period? Of course. I mean, this is the reason we're doing it after this year because they didn't deserve it before. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you know, we always want to make the right decisions. Just like it took me a couple of years to to really understand how the team flies and and that that it, that 
they needed their own plane and their own comfortable seats and and this is we wanted to go out look at a lot of different facilities see what certain ones had and none of them have it all and i'm sure as soon as this is completed we'll say oh my gosh we didn't do this okay that's just development construction it's the same as trying to put a team together you're never perfect but uh I, I think with the assets we have from being the Houston Rockets and being a brand and a great city to live in that free agents like, uh, having that 767 and, and having a facility like this and having a, a great general manager and, and a great coach and, and, and having a little bit of okay ownership to give them support that maybe we can get the right people here to always play. Uh, this question's for Ime. Rafael shared the story with us about the war room and kind of having that door to the outside. Uh, were there any specific kind of inputs that you had as to this facility, equipment, or things that you wanted to see as part of this kind of you know facility to make it special and stand out from other facilities around the league? Not really. I didn't have a ton of input, honestly, but um, got to learn the areas. And one thing we did talk about was close proximity to each other, uh, being very close to obviously walking distance to talk, communicate. And with the video guys, they're usually stuck in a, a back room. We have a very open area where we can walk right out, grab our guys and do film studies. And proximity from the uh, video room, the film room to the court, the players, I think just the symmetry of that is good. And obviously with all of us talking and being in communication daily, it starts from the top down to the bottom, but everybody's on the same page and we're on the same area. So. Didn't have input in it, but love the layout. Coach, Coach uh, joined us after we had already started construction. We immediately sat down with him and, and let him see the plans. And he's been in other facilities and said, it, honestly, this is how I would do it. And so he has been very supportive. He has a few tweaks that he would like us to make, which we're going to try to accommodate, of course. And uh, But we, we used it. A lot of experts and a lot of people that looked at a lot of facilities and we, we think we nailed it like i said anytime you build something there's something not right but we, we tried to nail it brian burkett first seat is there gonna be an ice cream machine at this one <laughs> we'll see if y'all are being and behaving when you get to some ice cream I will, I will, we will, we will, we will definitely give you a really nice coffee machine, though, and, and uh, I promise you that. <laughs> Mr. Petita, how much does this? I'm, I'm going to look out after you. Like, Y'all don't need to be eating ice cream during the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Petita, right here. What does it mean to you personally? We don't ever get a chance to really hear you talk about the way you give back, not only to the city of Houston, but to the Rockets and to the University of Houston. What does this facility and what you're doing for the University of Houston mean to you? This facility or the University of Houston? Both. You, you do so much for the city as far as these well, teams are concerned. You know, the city's been very good to me and, and uh, I feel very fortunate that, that I've been able to go back to my university and be the longest running chairman of the board in the history of the university. and been able to team up with uh, Chancellor Couture. Uh, she's been there 15 years. I've been there 14 years uh, to bring the university to another level. Uh, at, at the same time, we'll never be complete here at the Rockets until we all have rings. And uh, I have two rings from being involved with Les Alexander, but it's not the same. And uh, that's what it's all about. And it, it's no different than us making the decision uh, three years ago and Rafe and Patrick coming and talking to me with Eli and, and saying, we can either be an NBA purgatory, which the Rockets were at for eight years before James Harden, where you finish seventh, eighth, ninth every year basically, and you have no chance of winning the championship, or you've got to be really bad. And uh, we decided that when we traded for James that we wanted draft picks and we didn't want a player that instead of winning 20 games, we would win 32 games. And let's make sure that our young players get enough minutes in those first couple, three years that they can contribute by the third and fourth year. 
and and I don't know where this is going to all end up in in two years, three years, four years, five years, um, but so far, I think our management has made the right decision. And when you look at the two players, the first draft, Jalen and and um, Alpi. When you look at the second year, Jabari and Tari. And you look at this year with Amon and, and, and Cam, and you see what he's doing in the G League right now. And then you have a, a coach that had the foresight to say, I've got six guys that I can really develop. That all six of these people have a chance to be an all-star in this league. And I don't need any other young projects. And where the players that we released that some of the media said, why did you draft these guys and, and, and then you released them three years later or two years later, is because we, it's time to start winning. We don't, we don't want to be one of those teams that it took them eight years. Remember, the Lakers didn't make the playoffs, I think, for seven or eight years until they got LeBron. Phoenix was out for, what, 10 or 12 years. Sacramento, 14 years. Okay, I personally couldn't do more than, than two or three or four years, okay, that we weren't going to have competitive basketball. And, and we brought in great free agents this year. Uh, and you put them with the right coach, with our young guys, who's developing these guys, who's teaching these guys. And uh, so far, I, I think I give myself an A for listening and not telling, which I'm used to doing every day. And, and I give all of these people, starting with Gretchen, being a, a, a great president of business operations, to Tracy, uh, working with you guys to, to Rafael and his team to coach bringing in you know really 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 good coaches and and four of these coaches were the coaches for the Boston Celtics the last few years and uh, these are really good good coaches that work with Ime and they wanted to come here to Houston to coach for him and be a part of this organization and so we're trying to do everything right. We're gonna to continue to make some bad decisions. Uh, it's really hard when you truly have to make the decision. And, and, and that's just the way it is. So I hope I've answered your question. Any other questions? I gave a Bill Clinton answer where you ask a question and you give a 10 minute answer. Any other questions? Great, thank you gentlemen. Thank you all very, very much. Anybody else? Thank you. <laughs>